The greatest American alive. I didn't have a multicultural environment right. outside of light skin. That's as far as multicultural <laughs> is for niggas. Like dark, dark skin, light skin. That's it. And so to actually go get on the plane for the first time that I could remember, you know, going to Great Lakes, going to Illinois, you know, I think we might have went into O'Hare, I think, you know what I'm saying? Coming in, getting on that bus. My life changed from there. So I, I don't really subscribe to that black men shouldn't join the military. Because I was still black. I still had black proud, pride. In the mil- I never, you know, traded that all just by going to the military. One of the fastest ways to get to the middle class would be to join the military. It's right. like it's like a jet propulsion. You skip so much stuff, and America has so much love for the people who serve their nation. You get benefits just from serving. You get brotherhood, camaraderie. It's just a really good experience. I had a good experience. Like, back then, when I was doing it, when you're in this shit, you're like, this is horrible. <laughs> but the fringe benefits of having done it, oh, my goodness, it's changed my life drastically. Right. And so, like... I, I saw all these wonderful young men and like they were trained with honor, courage, commitment, right? This was drilled into you. And now I see that my country's eroding and I don't see them attacking the social issues with the exact same honor, courage, and commitment, that dedication to excellence. And I think it's our responsibility, like our generation who chose to go fight for freedom to fight for freedom at home also. Right. You know what I'm saying? We need some correcting right now. And don't nobody want to do the pow pow. Like it doesn't sound good. It doesn't feel good. Nobody wants to chastise anyone. But man, this is hard out here. I got three sons. I can't have them living this damn chaos and nonsense. We got to talk that man shit. We're not talking no man shit right now. Uh, we, we aren't talking about masculinity at all. The only reference we have to masculinity has been to talk of it in a toxic manner instead of just saying, hey, you got to get up. You got to get a job, got to work, take care of your family. You do have to defend fend the soil you live on. Hey, you said it best. And I put, his, put this as a post on Facebook and... I, it didn't really get a lot of response, but to a heterosexual black man, the conservative white man is his best friend politically. We politically do really believe a lot of the same things, but we can't say that in an environment, I think, where we're promoted to be more Democrat and more liberal. And I think that's one of the issues is this whole like, oh, America is so bad. You haven't traveled the world. You like, haven't been around. Like socially, what is it about America? Like, why do people lie so damn much? Like, I went to a high school. It wasn't 99.9% black. That wasn't the ratio. There was white people, white teachers, and I didn't have, you know, this, this extreme racist experience. Like, I didn't have anyone that was openly uh, being racist towards me. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, we graduate from high school, and we don't talk to these people for five years, and everybody's a racist. But my frame of reference would say that that's not true. The city that I live in, that's not true. The place that I work at, that's not true. And so, like, I just want to attack this fallacy. It's my personal opinion that once the civil, in the civil rights movement, once we claimed victimhood, we set up this entire legislative play to say, I'm a victim to try to get some type of monetary gain. Like, we we changed the whole narrative from helping people to some type of political gain. And it came through the rhetoric of victimhood. It's, It's definitely been downhill a long time. I do think racism and systemic racism is real and exists. However, comma, we overlook the tools that we get to be able to beat that as long as we apply them. So you look at Asians that come to this country, you look at Arabic people, immigrants who come to this country and thrive. How are they doing this? Like, how did they come to this country and thrive in a way that the ancestors to slaves couldn't when we are the ones that the rules were made for? I don't understand that. But it has it does have a lot to do with victimization, victimhood that came from like politically being pushed on you and pressed on you. I will say that. Um, And so I just think from this whole our movement got hijacked, bro. It's like it got hijacked by white women and white women <laughs> came in and brought a bunch of other stuff and packaged it into this what we feel shit. And that was our greatest mistake. And I think that may have been the burning house that Martin Luther King felt he brought us into. Attacking Martin Luther King and killing our leaders was a way that they put fear in us. They said, man, mm-hmm. I don't want another one of them. And so I'm going to show you what happens to them. All these other people, I think they're ancillary. You know what I mean? The main thing is the main thing. If American men don't fight wars, we don't have an empire. If American men don't do the construction in America, we don't have a nation. Like, we built this thing, and we sustain this thing. If we don't articulate that for real power, everyone else, they need social power so they can feel powerful in America. But when the actual power says, not only do I want to have social currency, but I also want legislative currency, then the whole conversation changes. When power demands power, everyone else who's pretending to be powerful, they can't be powerful no more. Nah, that's, that's true. I say this thing on my show. I say the world is on fire and there's nothing we could do about it. 
I just really believe that. I think things are just so fucking far gone. The only way we can really uh, progress as black people specifically is heal our families. I don't even think I can. I don't think we can even get to working with any other community until we fix our own internal families. And that's a gender war. I mean, there's a gender war going on inside the house right there. You really can't, I mean, until your home front is fixed, like inside of your house. For instance, when we were in the Navy, I remember this, uh, uh, CO gets on, on stage. We had some shit going on. And he, the first thing he said was, if your home life isn't great, you can't come here and, and, and be good on this ship. That needs to be well. So we need to, facilitate environments where our, ho our home life is improving or getting better, then we can actually get outside of that and deal with society. The issue is, man, these things really start in the home. Like men and women don't get along at the house. Uh, a lot of broken families. Uh, it's just, that's, that's what I personally feel that it starts. It starts right there. So that's kind of what I preach and push. Socially, when I see the transgender movement, I get so excited, man. I start getting so pumped up because I see the creativity of the human imagination. Like if these people can do that, imagine what the heterosexual male and female can do. We can really do some creative stuff in how we set up our relationships without looking at Will and Jada or whoever the, the precipice of relationships are in your mind. You could actually have a tangible, healthy relationship if you had the time to dedicate to having a healthy relationship, right? But this all comes through legislation. We incentivize women not to have a man. Like we will, we will fund it, will government support it, and they'll subsidize it from my pocket. I'm living it right now. We literally have legislation that turns American men into debt slaves to their own children. But we can't have that conversation because you tell me I'm supposed to. And now I'm supposed to until I want to have a conversation about legislation and how right now I'm a summertime father and a weekend father. I don't get no rebates. I have to pay for my place to live and donate to another situation also. But don't cry for me. There is no pity. I'm coming I'm coming for power through legislation, okay? Tell the truth and get some power. This is really hard out here. And y'all are perpetrating a fraud. You got to you got to tell the truth. That's the that's the main thing is telling the truth. Um and in and, and, and politics, no one wants to tell the truth cuz somebody wants to win. Somebody wants the advantage. So they're always selling this ridiculous idea. I definitely think that if we're going to talk about reform in any sense for abortion we have to talk about reform for child support it is ridiculous it is flawed i am in a system i live in a house with my kids but because i decided to go through a breakup at one time and i got put on child support that's when i found out i'll never get out that system it can get it can get flicked on like a <laughs> like a light switch and i was shocked like i am someone that is still a victim of that system and it could get flipped on the switch at any time because somebody's upset that I don't want to be with them and I don't want to deal with them, but I would love to have a relationship with my children. Hey, it's fucked up. But you know, like you said, I'm not crying. For every, <laughs> for every feminist in America, this is like a calling to you, I swear to goodness, right? For every feminist, you have to be for sexual equality. You have to be like, that's your whole philosophy. You said that men or women are equal. That's even when the balances of power have turned. It ha I have to have sexual autonomy too. I should be able to sleep with whomever I see fit and not and be part of the negotiation on what happens next. Oh, you're having a baby? I'm not ready for a baby. Oh, documentate that. Hey, uh, I'm going to sign these rights away immediately. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you, honey. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. You know, look, look, if the argument is equality, right? And if the argument is to be intersectional, as they say, feminism or feminists are, where they care about everyone, then there has to be rights across the board. If a man does not want to be a father and this woman wants to continue, it cannot be weaponized. Because what's happening is nobody talks about the flip side to shit. On one end, you do have dad be dads. You don't have that situation right here. You have very active fathers, right? But you do have these guys that they got to be told what to do, right? But on the other side of that coin, you have women who weaponize. Go ahead. Should a deadbeat dad be forced to be a good dad? No. He's just a bad person. Like. He, he's a bad dude. <laughs> like This is what I've learned, man. You can't escape the wrath of your own decision. It's going to happen. It's nothing you can do about it. I think that's the other part is that we're always trying to be the judge and jury. Look, it takes two to tango. Ignorance is no excuse. I said this today. Okay. In, in, on, on a story on Instagram because I was, it was about another situation, but I started to apply it to other places in my life. Ignorance is no excuse. Okay. Even if you don't know, it still could bite you in the ass. Hopefully you make it out of that situation to learn from it. So, hey, I didn't know it was a snake over there. Doesn't mean it's not going to bite you. You know, ignorance is no excuse. So if you didn't know this nigga wasn't shit. 
it's I mean, hey, it's not really like our fault. He ain't shit. He ain't going to take care of the kid. You have to move on and see what. But that doesn't mean duplicate that two to three more times. That happens a lot. But ignorance <laughs> is no excuse. No different with a man. You realize five, ten years in, you don't like her. Your three kids in it. You really don't want to be with her anymore. But there's still a repercussion to come from this. You just have to learn from it and move on. I don't like no, no matter how you slice it, right? If I get a separation from a person I have a child with, I still have to support myself. I still have to eat. I still have to yes. take care of this child, yes. especially if I'm, I'm co-parenting in real time. And for some reason, and this is where I get like, I get confused because I think there's a, two ideas that are they're destroying America right now. And those two ideas are racism and feminism, okay? Like when you talk about these bad, bad white men, bad, bad white men passed the laws for you to vote. <laughs> bad, bad white men passed the Emancipation Proclamation. You understand like, like, you have to be logical, okay? Like, they've made whatever steps to concede power. And most of the time, power never concedes itself. There had to be a force to push these gentlemen to concede some power. And now we got all this power, and we're still, we won't even recognize the advancements that we've made. And that confuses the hell out of me. I'm like, bro, we have billionaires and millionaires. The conversation has drastically changed, but we won't have the class conversation in the black community. Mm. Like, uh, black, it ain't black solidarity, you know what I'm saying? You got some black rich folks, you know what I'm saying? Black politicians, you know, you got black media, and that's the professional class who's dictating everything to you. That's why it's important for black men like this to have these conversations, because uh, it's not coming from organized media. This is not scripted media, understand? This is freedom talk, you hear me? Nah, it's true. You're getting real opinions in real time, in real situations, I think in a very real way. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.